<coughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Jason Gray. I'd like to call this meeting in order. This is the Inland Wetlands Commission of Monroe. It is May 22nd, 2019. It's currently 7.01. First order of business is always the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, I'll introduce the commission members here tonight. Starting all the way on my right is uh, Commissioner Ross Mascarocco. To my immediate right is Commissioner Jim Stewart, who is our treasurer. He's also a licensed professional engineer and a licensed land surveyor. I'm sorry, professional engineer and a licensed land surveyor. I just have to say this. Uh, I'm Jason Grady. To my left is Lois Spence, our secretary. To her left is Donna Shazinski, who is the office manager. <clears throat> to her left is Scott Schatzeline, who is town engineer, licensed professional engineer, and our inland wetlands agent. And also with us today is Sarah Stroud, our recording secretary. <clears throat> Before we start, I'll uh, read our mission statement. The objective and purpose of the Inland Wetlands Commission is to provide for the overall protection and preservation of the inland wetlands and watercourses within the town of Monroe. In the normal course of our meetings, we will hear public hearings and other applications. The protocol for public hearings is to have an applicant make a representation or presentation to the commission, during which and after which the commission will be asking the applicant questions. The commission will then review town, staff, and other independent comments. The meeting will be opened up for the public, for public, for, to the public for comment. Sorry, I will ask that all comments be made to the chair or the commission. After any and all com uh, comments, pro, in opposition, or of a general nature are made, the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond. It is not necessary that the applicant respond, but generally in their best interest to do so. There will be no further opportunity for questions unless new material is entered in as evidence or testimony during their response. Please keep any and all comments, pro and con, specific to inland and wetlands related matters. Other applications that, that do not involve public hearing will follow a similar format with the exception that there will be no public comments allowed. The meeting follows our published agenda unless otherwise amended. The agenda is up on the front table, so anybody that can copy. Are there any changes to the, amend uh, to the agenda tonight? Yes. Um, under item 10, Inland Wetland Agent Activity Reports, item A, Agent Approvals, <clears throat> I will be adding um, item A, A, IAA 2019-12, 433 Moose Hill Road, Propane Tank. Thank you. Uh, now is the period of our agenda. It's a time reserved for public participation of a general nature, not of anything to do on this agenda. None. Seeing none. Uh, moving on to regulated activities. Um, there is a regular meeting tonight. I-06-26A1, 74 Enterprise Drive. Amendment to the previous approval, modification to planning, uh, to planting and construction. Good evening. Good evening. Your lectern's gone. Uh, oh, yeah. Huh? Is it not on? Oh, the podium. Yeah, the podium's up here for some reason. Sorry. Oh. Bill Carboni, Spath Field Associates. I'm a professional engineer licensed in the state of Connecticut, representing Mr. Infante, who is the owner of this property. This is a uh, industrial building in uh, Pepper Street Business Park. As of right now, this portion of the building is constructed. When this was approved in about 2007, it was for the entire building, including the parking lot, or this was deferred parking at that time, which of course now would be uh, built as part of the uh, addition. But this is all outside the regulated air area. The place where we do have uh, amendments to the uh, approved plan is in this area where this riprap slope was constructed, which differs slightly from the two to one slope that was originally approved. 
I'll get to the differences in a minute. This is our proposed planting plan. This was, uh, it is similar to where what was approved before by the Planning and Zoning Commission, except that we have proposed moving these buildings from what would have been located here to the bottom of the slope. When this was originally uh, constructed, there was a temporary sediment pond in that area and all the runoff was directed to it. With the completion of the first phase of the project, the uh, basin was removed and a riprap slope put in there. These plantings, we were proposing to move it down to this area. Similarly, in this area, these are the plantings that are the same, but we're moving them to the Toa slope from what was uh, originally proposed. This is the, uh, the original plan as it was approved by this commission <coughs> and by the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. As you can see, the configuration in general is the same. The next one is an overlay of the two plan. Well, it's, in red is the approved site plan. In the gray is what is an as-built of what is out there today. So as you can see, we had proposed this to be in here, and this riprap slope was brought across there. There's some minor differences in the uh, slope in there, and this is slightly different in some places. It's, it's further away from, or closer to the wetlands in other places, it's further away from the wetlands. But in general, it's approximately the same. And again, this is the uh, landscaping that was approved, and that is very similar to what we had before. So this is, those are the modifications. They're relatively minor modifications. Um, they. There is some work here within the 100 foot regulated area, but in general we feel that this is uh, a very similar plan and we're asking for that modification. Um, is there any questions? Was the detention basin that's there now on the left of the screen, was that approved initially? That was approved as part of the subdivision and it was done with the road construction and this was accepted as part of the road construction. It really has nothing to do with, uh, it was built and constructed and accepted before this uh, site plan was submitted to the commission. When was that road formally accepted by the town? Do About 2006, give or take. Yeah, is it, is, was it actually accepted I'm not remembering that it was accepted, but um, I presume it was. It, it we was the detention basin was put in as part of the road system. Okay. I'm assuming it was because I don't think we could have had lots on an unapproved road. I think it was. It, it was accepted, but not deeded. That's what it is. That's what I remember. It was not. It wasn't. The roadway wasn't deeded. Oh. But I believe the acceptance did go through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the comments on the application review team uh, sheet was that they thought that it would be a good idea to have the geotechnician uh, confirm the stability of the wall. And um, there are definitely some areas that I think would be a good idea. Um, there is, we've, we've visited the site, Ross and yeah, I were there earlier. I just don't know. I didn't get any comment. The only comments I got were about the vegetation and the uh, I sent you the comments. She's talking about my comments. Yeah. Dated um, 5 10 19. You didn't get those? I didn't get those. Do you have an extra copy? I don't think I do, actually. I don't know I don't. Because I sent them in the packets. Well, then, in lieu of that, let me, let me go through them. 
for the record, and then you could just respond to them. Some, some of the stuff I think I saw, I, although I didn't review P and Z yet, I think some of the stuff you you uh, you're addressing is part of the planning and zoning application. Yes, there is a separate set. All right. So the first comment was just that the original Wetlands Commission approval of the property I O O six twenty six. Although the work progressed and the building was constructed, there was never a certificate of occupancy issued and work was never completed. Uh, uh, C proposed compilation plan for comparison of the approved versus the uh, uh, completed work. That's what you just went over with them. Uh, in addition, there are outstanding ongoing inland wetlands and planning and zoning violations of unapproved storage of equipment, materials, and uses within the property. Note that this application is also an effort to clear up these issues. Administrative, there were four comments. The first is commission needs to determine if an updated soils report is needed to be provided. Also, were any invasive plant species introduced along the wetlands? Two, the postal, uh, postal receipts for the notice to aquarium water. Did you get those? Because I didn't see them in the file. I, I will get them to you. Okay, so we're looking for the, the receipts for that and the Commissioner of Public Health. Number three, a report from the Health Department. I don't think we got that yet, right? Okay, so that's the other thing. And then four, all conditions of the referenced original approval should remain in place. That goes without saying. All right, so under technical, the provided survey needs to include original signature and boss stamp certification seal. That's the housekeeping. Uh, benchmark housekeeping. C, notation seven that the wetlands flagging was located as part of the survey should include clarification that the flagging was surveyed as part of the original survey. I, I don't believe you reflagged it. Okay. Uh, item two, drainage and utilities. Since the stormwater drainage system varies from the layout as originally approved, specifically relative to the approach to water quality treatment, revised drainage calculations should be provided. I didn't see them as a big deal. Uh, it looks like what happened was there's a low flow uh, or high flow bypass in lieu of an inline system, from what I can tell, you know, kind of looking at the difference between the plans. So I was just looking for clarification on um, flows and, you know, capacities and things like that. Yeah, well, this actually has two systems. One, of course, it, is, it flows through the the main on-road system. When we change, when we looked at the uh, back doing the subdivision, we originally started that each lot was going to do their own detention. Then, as this changed, we modified the size of the basins and started including lots that logically flowed to that basin, which was this lot, the lot that's to the north and the two on the other side. These were all piped by a street drainage into this basin. In addition to detention here, it has a series of underground galleries in that area that accepts the one inch storm, which is a typical criteria that we have. So uh, the detention, the drainage and detention system is pretty much as it was originally proposed. I calculated the impervious area of what is proposed here with what was originally proposed. It's slightly less, but it's essentially the same, so there would be no change in the, the criteria for detention or water quality. Now, that's the water quality of the roof. No, was, what I was referring to is there's a, um, there was a <coughs> water quality unit that was required. And it looks like one was put in, yes. but it wasn't put in um, in line. It was put in as a bypass. So I, I think it's going to be fine. I just need some clarification on that. That's all. I mean, and that's, well, I don't know how applicable it is to wetlands, but it, it just is something I happen to notice. Um, I'm trying to I'm working on memory at the moment. Um, Yeah, all right. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick up on this
think the unit you're referring to is in this area. Pardon? So the previously approved plan shows it as a, with a high flow bypass, correct? Yes. In other words, we're treating up to whatever, then any in larger storms that would bypass this unit. So, I'm, I mean, the, the new plan isn't clear about it. I guess I'm, I'm looking for clarification here. So, I mean, there's not any data on the storm drainage. No, so, this is a, it's an as-built survey, so they, yeah. we would have to take that from the original plan. All right, so the original plan shows it, um, shows the, the water quality treatment. It shows the water going into the water quality treatment and then back to the manhole before going, uh, well, you know, it's probably fine. It's now showing the water quality treatment and then it goes into the basin instead of back into the drainage system. So there's, there's an additional, there's now an additional outlet into the basin that wasn't in the original approval. Right. So I mean, that yeah. needs to be presented okay. tonight and and you need to just back that up with the you know fine tuning your the the report so that I have the necessary information. That's assuming that they're okay with the that being added to the basin. I mean it's the same probably the same flow that's arriving at the same right. location. So but it means that um, there's two discharges instead of the one that was supposed to be. But they're both going to the riprap and to They're into going the, to the riprap, the same location. So I'm not anticipating that it's going to be any kind of problem. We couldn't but, even see the basin. What's that? You, you can't even see that basin. Oh, I know. You would it's, not know that it was there. I was telling you that it's filled with <laughs> invasives. <laughs> so that's something that the town has to go and. Now, the, the round circle, I'm assuming, is either the top of. Um, where, where we have just before it empties into the detention base, and this is on the as built. Um, we saw that today, and it appears to be in the center of the riprap wall, not where it's depicted on the plan. It's halfway up the, the riprap wall. Yeah. This basin you're referring to? Not the basin, the round, I mean, the, the circle, the, the clean out, or whatever that is, the, the, you know, the concrete cap. Yeah. It's halfway up the wall, so it's not. No, what what you what you're seeing here? Let me show you. What you what you're looking at, I think, is all right. So the gray is what they built. Mm -hmm. There's a manhole right here in, in the riprap called a wall. See it right there? That's what they built. There's one here and there's one over there. There's two of them. So I'm gonna guess that if you saw one up in the riprap, it's this one. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was in the middle of the slope. Yeah. Right? yeah. I think that's the one you're looking at. It's yeah. just their plan is so yeah, busy yeah. that you can't well, really. Well, the only way we show both. What we're trying to do is show you that. Yeah, that's right. Change. Well, I'm just looking at the as built alone now so they didn't get confused with the rest. Yeah, so if you go to the first plan that's showing what they're proposing, mm -hmm. that will show it clearer. Okay. I just wanted some clarification on that because I was confused. Um, what is the plan? Or the area to the east of the parking yeah. lot on the far, um, far Oops, north sorry. of the property. <laughs> sorry. Whee. Hold on a second. Is that better? Now, what were you at? What is? Uh, keep going to. Uh, see, keep you going can see to, it oh, here. Oh, where's the back on the other one? Okay. <laughs> So this is the proposed plan. Mm -hmm. So this is the as-built plan. Oh, the as -built. Yeah. this is as-built. What's out there? This is what's out there, correct? Right. As opposed to the excuse me, uh, the proposed plan. So right. the as-built, what's out there? You were look probably looking at this manhole, which is okay. up in the stone. There's another manhole over there. All right. Okay. And Thank you. We couldn't see that. That was the second outfall that Scott was referring to out of the water quality treatment. Okay. All right, so to get back to my comments, that's something oh, that would need to be um, addressed in the engineer report. Um, then I got uh, <laughs> the extensive invasive plant species present in the detention basin should be removed and eliminated. Uh, 
uh, where said invasive plants introduced during the construction res respective to this site development, or were they was that material there prior to that? Um, I don't know the answer. The invasive species. Yeah. So I'm sure they came in after construction. Um, well, I mean, I'm not positive of that, but because you guys put in, you you put in this drainage here that yes. goes into the basin. So this was all disturbed, and somehow that all that stuff got introduced. I think it really to talk to the town, kind of work with the town. Uh, I would think since it's a basin that the town's responsible for maintaining, it's something the town would kind of work with you on. Okay. Public works when I say the town. Yeah. Um, and storm drainage facilities for the proposed new parking area should be provided. I'm talking about over here, uh, some you know, drainage facilities in this area. I don't know what you're planning to drain it out here and then down yes. here. Yes, in the plans that came with planning and zoning, this all sheet flows to this point. And as I said, the, the basins that we had out there we're designed to accept the, both phase one and phase two of this development. So we're just going to sheet flow this into the existing system and uh, it would be part of as originally approved. Okay, that, that's something that I noticed I'm a little concerned about because that's a good distance from the catch basin, so. Gosh, I didn't see any catch basins. It's just asphalt along the back of the building and the rest of the parking lot towards the woods is just all gravel. He's talking about the catch basin right there. Yeah, but we didn't see any. Maybe there was stuff on it? Is there? Well, There's a lot this of not, stories. This is not in the paved area. area. Oops. That didn't work, right? What is going on? Yeah, the pavement ends here. This is just, of course, the building ends here too. This is in place, but it's in not in a paved area. It could be under the pile of mulch too. Yes, there are. Or the pile of gravel, or right. the, the pop-up, or and there was a storage truck the uh, trailer out there. And this uh, amendment includes removing material in that area. And of course, once you pave it and build the other building, it kind of goes away anyhow. What's the plan for the, um, the area that's directly east of the proposed parking lot? You've got the septic system there. Yes. And what else is proposed to be used for that area? Nothing. Nothing? No. There is, I mean, this will have to be built in, of course, the driveway and we have a septic system in there. Other than planting the, this vegetation, we're not proposing anything. Then it, due to its proximity to the wetlands and the fact that you're adding a lot of car um, vehicular traffic and that kind of thing, it should probably be planted. Um, I want to know what we're going to do with this area. Mine would be planted with grass and mow it so we don't get invasive species. We would propose just planting it and keeping it mowed because obviously invasive species are coming into this area. So, um, you know. So it's to remain lawn, absolutely no storage on it? To become lawn. Okay, oh, yeah, to become, yeah, that, 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 that yes. yeah, a long way before you get to yes. that point. Right. Um, yes, no storage. Says, no storage whatsoever. No, no. And the, the water, the temporary sediment basin has already been removed. So no, we would just propose planting it and mowing it. Of course, I mean, we got the septic system here, which we would want to keep in grass. And then down in here, we will just continue the grass down to the top of the riprap slope and keep it mowed. I would then like to see plantings along the top of the slope um, that follow the top of the, uh, the riprap because that is a deviation from the originally approved plan. The riprap wall wasn't originally going to be there. No, it wasn't. Um, and um, it, 
extends quite a bit way, quite a bit away down the hill from the original plan down toward the wetland. So I'm thinking if you're not going to do anything with that area and um, that uh, an extra row of trees or three would be. Um, we'll continue like this, these trees here and just continue it across. Yeah, the soldier course the or, or, or planting of a series of plantings. Yeah. Um, understory also as well as trees. Well, yeah, I just want to, the key to this, I think, is going to be keeping it mowed. Because as you can see, I mean, we have invasive species going up the riprap. So this will all have to be cleaned out as we plant this. So again, all right, we will put a row of vegetation along the top of that slope. All right, when you're cleaning out the slope, um, you're talking about cleaning out all of the riprap slope to, um, to restore it back to just plain riprap, or are you gonna um, be selective? A, there was bugwort growing in it. There was, there was, a, lot of, there was a lot of stuff growing in there. I mean, it was extremely well vegetated. It may not have been good vegetation, but it was very well Some of it was pretty clean, but then the areas that were Mm. Invasive. Mm -hmm. Go out and rip off the plants that are in there that are invasive species. If they're a good species, we'll keep them. You, you said there was mugwort. Mugwort out there? A lot of it, yeah. Which is not. Yeah, we, we, we can do that. Yeah. You're, you're not talking about disturbing the riprap. No, 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 no. no. Taking the vegetation. No, just out. taking the vegetation. Okay. Out. All right, yeah. sure. Sure. Do. Um, there's also a section of wall that was extremely steep, um, and it's right underneath the um, <laughs> the concrete. You've got Jersey barriers and some some kind of concrete with withholding area with mulch inside of it, and there's the wall behind. Oh, pardon me, I'm, I'm struggling here. Um, the wall behind it is extreme. Uh, I'm not even sure it's one to one. This area. Yeah, These are right underneath where that storage area, where all those big concrete um, barriers are yeah. sitting on top of it, and you've got a really, really steep slope, and it goes down for quite a ways. Um, is not. It doesn't appear. I did not climb up it, but <laughs> <laughs> and um, it appears that it's not completely accurately depicted on the plan here, unless there is something that we're missing. Well, I mean, the steeper area obviously would be in here. Yeah, but that's where it is. We'll have to verify. Very, very steep. We can verify that. Right. I mean, we, well, I'll have the survey verified to make sure that give you some spot elevations on top and the bottom. Okay. Rather yeah. than just the contour, so you can measure the slope. And consider, considering we do have a considerably steep slope there, I'm thinking that uh, Scott's idea of a geotechnical review would be a good idea to see how secure it is, especially considering the load it's got on the top of the slope. Well, if, it's, if the slope turns out to be more than one-on-one, -on -one, I would agree with that. A normal riprap slope is one-on-one. -on -one. So when we get the additional just, spots... Just a clarification on that. Uh, town standard... The maximum mm -hmm. slope that's allowed is two to one, mm -hmm. and I would not consider a one to one uh, riprap slope standard by any means. Um, anything that's steeper than two to one is why I recommended the geotechnical engineer. Um, that's the the town's uh, maximum grade for a graded slope. For any slope, riprap, anything. Uh, anything we, steeper we than anything steeper than two to one is not allowed for zoning regulations. But what is in this area <clears throat> is the town was in the practice a number of years ago of allowing one to one slopes when they were rip wrap. Right. So they they did in some cases allow steeper slopes one to one. But the reason I put that comment in there is because that's standard, that was just a follow-up um, with any of these slopes that went in for all these developments. We always got the geotechnical engineer's certification at the end that it was stable. And the reason for that was the Planning and Zoning Commission requires that because they uh, were allowing it to go steeper than their regulations allowed. So that's what we
Yeah, that's a standard. Yeah. Um, I will have the slope certified. Thank you. Now, um, I'm noticing at the bottom of the, or at the top of the slope, is that a, oh, and it's hay bales. So that, that's for the drainage. Are you planning on anything more permanent at the top of the slope? There are certain areas where the slope is getting a little bit further and further. Um, it's moving. Um, I'd like to see some kind of demarcation so that it doesn't develop more legs. Well, I, I assume you're talking about this area in here. Yeah, I think where that okay. second well, set of hay bales is, there seems to be a, a great deal of... Um, there's hay bales here, there's hay bales yeah. here. We're going to be constructing a driveway there, and there will be a bituminous curve all along here. So... Is that depicted anywhere? Well, this is, this is a bituminous curve right here. This all is bituminous. So curve. that's only going up as far as the storage units that are currently there? And then it ties back into the... The walls that you're referring to, and then in here, there will be a bituminous curve. So the whole thing will be either bit curve or the concrete walls that are already there. So I think that will stop any creeps that might be occurring. New Jersey barriers? Is that what you mean by concrete walls? Well, are these concrete walls or New Jersey barriers? Mafia. Those are, those are mafia blocks. Okay, these are the two I call by them three Jersey by six foot. I, I gravity know blocks. I call the Jersey barrier. What? Um, gravity blocks. Gravity blocks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't take offense. So. Uh, these are the, the gravity blocks, and the, the, the curves will be brought into those on both sides. So what happens? I mean, excuse me for being dense, but what happens to all the water that does not get in the catch basin? It just gets funneled right down and plows into the side of the gravity block. Then where does it go? No, it, this will be slope in from the, uh, this is gonna be a flat top basin. It'll be sloped from the uh, bit curve to here and from the gravity blocks back to here. That okay, become, that makes more sense, thank you. That will become a low point. Okay. <laughs> um, the planting's at the bottom of the slope. I'm trying to figure out how much sense that makes because <coughs> The area is so heavily wooded right now, so heavily vegetated, that um, I'm not sure our staff would even be able to find them if you planted them. What do you think, Scott? I mean, it, it, we're talking about heavy-duty forest down there. Yeah, uh, how much of it is invasives? I don't know. I don't know. And that's, so you could probably maybe get that information. If it's invasives, then it's not a bad idea for them to do that. Right. If it's not invasives and it's as thick as you're saying, then you're right. Yeah, what's the point of ripping out a good buffer to put in another buffer? You know? mm -hmm. So it all depends upon whether that growth down there is invasive or not. I don't know if Ross saw it. A lot of saplings, cottonwood, some Russian olives in there, and maple saplings. And so mix of but how, how big was it? What was the diameter of the sapling? Some of the stuff might have been three, four inches. Well, that's most so likely bigger than what we would be. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. Could you? Um, would it be possible to have an expert look and see how much of everything that you have? Not everything, but you know what I mean. Give a general consensus of um, invasive versus um, good stuff and see if it makes sense. It might just might not make sense to put a bunch of plantings in an area that's already well planted. You're digging up and disturbing to put right. something else in. Um, so you're saying a, a, a... I'd rather see them go along with it. Like a program <laughs> you know? to take out, the, if it's only a few invasives, to take the invasives out and let, let the other stuff grow that's there instead well, it, of, instead that's of why putting the, in plantings. That's why we need an expert to say. Hmm? Not cottonwoods. 
You yeah. just like them or you dislike, dislike them? them. Oh, you dislike them. They make quite a mess in my backyard. <laughs> so <laughs> anyhow, things. fine, as a condition of approval, why don't we just say from this point to in this area, the whole base, that as they're planting it, don't follow this plan, but produce the same number of trees if they're warranted and utilize the existing trees or vegetation. I mean, if there's shrubs or other things that are put in there, yes, why not? What about if it's invasive, all invasive in there, though? Right, yeah. Well, I think I what if it's invasives in there? Then we go with the planting plan as shown. Or, yes. There's areas, you know, we may find an area in here where it's all invasive, but over in here we have some trees. That's why I say as they're planting it, come in here and have it supervised by a landscape architect or someone such as that that is qualified to make that judgment. Uh, do, I think it's a good idea. I think going out and doing a survey at this time is kind of a waste of money. We should do it when we're planting it with somebody who knows what they're doing. There's always an element of, of um, insecurity in doing it as a condition of approval. Um, personally, I like to see the things before we close the hearing so that if there is any issues, we can discuss it in front of the PAC, come back, and reopen a new conversation. Um, How would you like a report like that presented? Tree by tree, then have it, have it surveyed? It, it just seems like... Oh, large amount of work that could be done if it's supervised by a professional. Is this not also supposed to be re remediating and uh, fixing a violation? Not. I don't think we're asking too much. There was an awful lot of variation from the original approved plan that happened here. All we're asking for is a report to, in the long run, save you some money by not having to buy a whole bunch of new plantings and to put them in. A simple report, no, not tree by tree, obviously, but a simple report um, just saying what is there and that that we can take it from there. That's that's the way I look at it. I don't believe the violations were any plantings. Was, well, that's what they want to know. Right, but I don't um, think the violations were plantings. No, but the, the violation and remediation all goes to hand in hand. It's a whole package. It's not just one little individual thing. So, um, if that's that's so Lois, opinion. what you're saying is you're 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 looking for someone to look at this area and make some recommendations on what should be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not that's not a counting tree. Not tree. a counting tree, but you know there might be there might be enough there that just pulling out the, um, the invasives would or addressing the invasives one way or the other might solve the whole problem. puts our staff into a difficult position sometimes, and we'd really rather the, rather take the, the onus on our shoulders rather than our staff's shoulders. My personal opinion, the rest of the, we have the rest of a commission who has opinions of their own, so uh, that's mine. <clears throat> well, it's nice to have the stuff on, <clears throat> instead of having a conditional approval, it's nice to have the final plan that we're approving. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what you're proposing. If you go out there and they say, hey, there's a lot of nice stuff down there, and then you don't put anything in, I don't know that that's going to be satisfactory. Or there's some nice stuff and some really not so nice stuff. Yeah. And then when you look at the plan, it's supposed to be this. Can you put the plan of what what you were supposed to the combo plan? What was supposed to be in
No, I don't think the computer likes you. I don't think so. No. <clears throat> now the red is what you were supposed to build. The red, yes, that was as approved. The gray is what was built. It's an as-built plan. So the bottom of the slope in those areas is approximately where it's supposed to be. It's just steeper. It, it varies. Let me just put It was supposed out. to be two to one. It turned out to be one to one. Is that? Well, well I'm not. So no. this, see, this is where the bottom. It, it was proposed. And that's and, where? And that's where it is. So okay. it, it was shortened up in that area. Okay. Here, the reverse is true. That this extended out a little bit farther than that. But in general, it's, it follows. It's fairly close until. Right. Yes, it's fairly close. So they just made it steeper. And got a little bit more paved area. Well, in, in some areas, in some areas, it's it's maybe steeper, but it's pulled back from the wetland, so it, it kind of varies as to what's going on in there. But no, here is the top of slope. It that's what's supposed to be. Oh, that's what, that's it, what it is. That's, that's where it is. is. So we didn't gain any pavement in that area. Yeah, if anything, the top of slopes that's further away mm -hmm. from the wetlands. Right. Okay, in so in that areas, area, it's, it's less steep then? Yes. Yes. Right. So it's less steep? Yes. Okay. This, this is an obvious one-to-one -one slope, the proposed in this area. And the, as I said, they did that a number of years ago. That The commissions allowed one-to-one -one slopes, even though they didn't comply with the zoning so, regulations. And, and so what do they have there now? It's when? about two to one, two in to this one. area, two to one rip -rat. It varies anywhere from one to one to mm -hmm. two to one. Right. Okay. So the only area that, that had, has potentially more impact is the area up to the right. This area in here, yes. It's not that this was not to be disturbed. It's just that they finished it with a riprap slope. There, there was in this area a so temporary be, sediment pace. So it was going to be two to one in the plan. It turned, it just turned into two to one riprap. No, in that area there where he's pointing to, that was supposed to be a uh, during construction, initial construction, or or even or this portion of the construction, they were supposed to have a sedimentation basin in there, and so they. Uh, they built the septic system, and they did the sedimentation basin, took the sedimentation basin out, but when they did, they continued the riprap slope across there, probably assuming they were gonna make that into additional yard area. Around it. Which is what happened. Well, the, the Which is basin, what happened, right. The so, sediment basin was taken out, and then they rip it. So now they got that slope there, and or that wall or slope, whatever you're calling it, and now uh, they're proposing to grade off the top so it's uh, and make it like a lawn. Right, Unif uniform over the over the. Uh, so I think this this. I would assume you're not going to mow it like a like a lawn lawn. It would be more like a meadow grass. Right, mow it two or three times a year. Yeah. Uh, 
the beginning of the season and then and, you know at the end of the season just to keep these bases down. Well, it would make sense to me that if there's a lot of, of plantings and shrubs and, and invasives or whatever else at the bottom of that wall before they go and put anything in there, someone's going to look at it and determine what they recommend. And we should see that before we, we say yes. Yeah, just to help you guys along a little bit, I, I thought you were headed in that direction anyway because you, you, the, the hearing can't be closed because uh, well, we, you can't stop the meeting without um, providing all of the information. In other words, you can't, you can't, they can't just move on to a deliberation and then submit the postal receipts and things like that. So I thought that you were kind of headed, um, unfortunately. They do, you know, they do every other week, so it's not the end of the world, but. Can you just generally outline where the sedimentation basin was? In this area, about halfway, half on the slope, half in the river, is now a river. This, what you're looking at here, was the original approved plan. And the sedimentation basin was in here. Here's some sill fence, LOD line, and all of that. that you can see we came see it now. Okay. approved relatively close to the wetlands. Then going back to the red line, that toe of slope is actually farther away from the wetlands than the original <coughs> LOD line is. So really this work in here, disturbance of that area has, was previously approved in addition to, you know, the, the LOD line came down farther south. But it is a modification, it was a slope before, now it's riprap, but it's right. within an approved disturbed area. It's just a silly question, but um, the automotive repair, is that supposed to be in the front of the building or the back of the building? In the building. It's also going to be housing a landscape company, right? This is, the, this is all inside the building. There's a, a equipment a truck area here. Uh, this is an entertainment. That's the existing building. I'm only talking about the, the new building. They are just manufacturing, zone for manufacturing and industrial. But all that would be in interior to Say the Say that building. again, please. What, what you this is zone for manufacturing and industrial. And those are the uses that we're proposing within the phase two building. Understood. I mean, I'm, I'm going by your, your narrative. And it said you propose approval to permit an automotive repair facility. I just want to know okay. is it at the front of the building or the back of the building? It's in this building right here. This was a project description that was written for both this commission and the Planning and Zoning Commission. The mobile truck is a special exception permit for within the building. That's why it's in your project description. It's not outside, there's no uses outside. But I thought the narrative was, was for the new building. I didn't think that had any application to the old part of the building. Yes, because a, we need a special exception permit for the existing building to have a repair facility. Oh, because you don't have a CO yet? No, just because it's a change in land use. That use requires a special exception permit. So it's just manufacturing. What are we man manufacturing in the new section of the building? As of right now, yeah. I mean, we do not have proposed uses at this time. But it would be without 
any further modification would be manufacturing industrial. <coughs> I mean, we have a landscaping here, we have a music entertainment here. Those are all permitted uses. But that description includes both the uh, wetlands and the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission narrative. Because I find it very interesting that the, for the landscaping business, you list a whole lot of things that will that will apply to it, but yes. nothing under the automotive repair facility. And I just thought that was interesting. That's all. Um, the reason I ask is that certain industrial uses and in certain manufacturing processes require more um, protection because of their of the cost of chemicals they may be using or uh, because of anything that could be pollution creating. So that's why I wanted to know what was going in there so that we would know whether or not we need to have any alert, you know, be alerted to anything that might be dangerous to the, to the big, that's the headwater of the Bequanic right there. Yes, it is. I mean, and there would be nothing more horrible than polluting the headwater of the Bequanic before it even got downstream. So yeah, but th you're this right. is this my is this true is of the whole process. industrial park. Yeah, I know. You don't have to remind me. Well, going um, back before the Pepper Street Business Park, we had proposed this for residential. I know, I hear that all the time. But that's all that's all past history. That doesn't but matter that, anymore. Exactly. We're what, dealing with what's happening now. Exactly. So and, and we, we conform with the zoning. Or we will when we get this approved. Will there be any um, I'm not quite sure how to approach this. Depending on what kind of industry goes in there could determine what other protections we need. Yes, but it's, it, if it's a use that is not allowed by zoning, we will have to come back at least to planning and zoning and query for our developments. Okay, I'll think about this for a while. I'll tell you again next time. Okay, thank you. All right, so to recap, does anybody else have anything they want to? So what, what are we looking for for our next? I'm assuming we have to come back on this, right? And we're looking yeah, for? There are some administrative things we have to. The geotechnical engineer, the, yep. the wall, the planting that we just discussed, right? Um, the geotechnical engineer is usually something that can be done as, as a condition when, and usually we get that sign off at the end of the construction. Oh, okay. Sorry. So that one's no. So what happens if they, if they don't sign it off? Well, they have to. As I'm, a condition. You know, I mean, then if, whatever, if it's already closed. Whatever the problem is has to be addressed. Uh, you know, the section is taken down and we, we but then does that spur a whole new application in order to do no, that? No, it's part of the construction. So that's, as the construction uh, But they're not proposing for construction on the wall. So what? if they're not proposing any construction No, what I'm saying is before we release the bond, typically, on all mm -hmm. these properties, we get a sign off from a geotechnical engineer saying that the slope was constructed in a manner that is stable. Uh, and for the record, we get that. If, if, they, if they come back and say it's not stable, then they do what they have to do to make it stable. You know, be it pull out a section and, and redo it with different shape stones. Hence my question, because then if there's more activity within oh. the re regulated area. But this was so, a yeah, I see what you're saying. So because this is a situation where they're not proposing it from scratch and they're going to construct it, this is a situation where they already It, it already exists, and if it's unstable... Well, but it was a um, previously approved project, and this activity was previously approved. Well, what she's getting at modified. is the, the, the riprap wall, if you want, we're calling it that, wasn't previously approved over here. This, this yes. is new. Yes. This was done without approval. 
So technically, yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm probably splitting hairs. So I'm just. Yeah, like, I mean, it's. it's constructive. I've seen so much go on that I'm trying to protect everything that we can from the beginning, so that there's no surprises. I mean, this wall's been there for ten years. So I mean, it's not. Yeah, to be honest with you, we haven't gotten very, we, we haven't gotten, I can't even remember getting a report saying that something was not acceptable. No. That's good. Okay. All right. So my understanding is that you're going to want a geotech report sometime before bond release. You're going to want a landscape architect to evaluate the planting area and provide a report in a general nature as to what should be done, and Scott's comments regarding drainage in his letter. Is that and to show some plantings along the top of the slope. Oh, yes. To the east of the parking lot. And just, just so you know, and Bill, I'll send it. I don't understand why you didn't get this, but I'll send it, it could again. Be within our office. It could be in your yeah. office, yeah. Um, I'll um, send it to you. Uh, just to finish up, I had uh, sedimentation road control shown on the plan. Uh, five limits of wetlands should be shown on the lighting plan in order to verify that there is no spillage of light into the wetlands. Uh, restoration measures should be provided for the disturbed area just below the septic system. You already talked about that. And the bond recommendation uh, will be provided once you both comments have been addressed. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> Is that everything? Okay, so we'll continue to our next scheduled meeting, which is what date? June 12th. June 12th. Agenda is a notice of violation discussion IWV 2019-05244 Web Circle filling in a conservation and regulated area. Good evening. Good evening. Can you say your name and address for the record, please, sir? The Gonzalez of 244 Web Circle. Thank you. So just to start things off and explain a little bit about what's going on is that um, the, this, we, you got this in the mail, right, the report? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. So that report was provided to the, um, the commission, this commission, uh, a meeting or so ago, and they reviewed it and wanted, from that information, wanted to talk to you and find out what's going on in the property. So basically, um, uh, the uh, it, it came about as doing an inspection in the area to uh, notice the activity uh, involves unapproved filling within an upland review area. Upland review area is the area that uh, they're here to protect wetlands. An upland review area is an area that they regulate in order to protect the wetlands. So it's it's a uh, hundred feet beyond the wetlands. Anything you do in that zone typically needs a permit. Unapproved filling within a conservation easement. Conservation easement is a, um, uh, a restrictive area that um, is through uh, pretty much through your deed and through previous approvals. It's a prohibitive zone. You're not allowed to do, basically not allowed to do anything in it, uh, any disturbance at all. Uh, you can Go in it, you can utilize it, but you can't change it in any way or disturb it. Unpermitted shed within 100 feet of the, uh, within the upland review area. Non-permitted placement of fill on the property. Uh, I think that goes with zoning as well as wetlands. 
and a disturbance on the adjacent property, so there's an encroachment beyond uh, which. So um, refer uh, reference to various documents and maps, and this goes to your property right here. Um, just in case Denise didn't fully explain it, the cross-hatched area is the conservation easement. That's the prohibitive zone. I've already explained to the commission that the, and it's kind of weird, but but you're not you're a new owner, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, the original owners had an approval to build the house way back here, and somehow the house got put over here, and the septic system, which was supposed to be here, is now back here. So there's quite a bit of variation. Some of it was sanctioned in that the obviously the house got a. Um, there was a CO issue for the house, I guess, so um, some of it has been sanctioned. But this shaded blue area, bluish green area, that's the wetlands. So that's the uh, area that they're trying to protect. But in this case, the protection goes all the way to this yellow line here. The pink area is the area that has been disturbed without permits. This red dashed line is the 100 foot upland review area. But, but probably more clearly shown is this dash green line, which is the limits of disturbance which were originally approved. So this area was approved to be disturbed. However, it wasn't disturbed when the septic system was relocated, but then subsequently disturbed by the previous owner there was a lot of debris, construction material and debris put over in this area, and uh, obviously the shed here, and uh, et cetera. So that's pretty much what we're dealing with. Here's some pictures showing the, the recent fill uh, and the recent grading and disturbance. Um, you can see um, that it's um, kind of quite notable. There's a very large area, I think, the previous owners were using it as a uh, ATV type track and things like that. You know, and some of this area is beyond the upland review area, so it's it's yard area. We don't like <coughs> to see open disturbance, and hopefully you 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 have the same thought that you'd rather have it into a lawn kind of thing. Uh, there's the shed, uh, which I don't know if that's something you would even want. Um, and then um, more photos. I'm, I'm scrolling down because the, uh, the image here does show the debris I was talking about. And I, I believe a lot of that, if not all of that, was removed. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and down here, here we go. Here is the approved plan. So you can see that the septic system was in this area. And the house was way back here as, a, as approved. I just could not find any record of, um, well, record other than this plan, which is the as built showing where it ended up. <laughs> so we don't, I don't understand yeah. how it got to where it is, but the fact of the matter is that's there. Yeah. That's, it's there. So we got to deal with it at that, at least deal with that portion of this. All right, so that's um, the purpose of this meeting is to uh, get your, get some information from you. They're going to ask some questions. You could ask some questions and, you know, uh, just have a bit of a discussion. And the goal of this meeting is so that the commission can get enough information to understand and then determine what process, if any, is needed in order to resolve the issue. So we're not here to resolve the issue tonight, but rather to gain information and determine what process would be needed to do that, if okay. anything. All right, so with that, why don't you introduce yourself and tell them uh, a little bit about Dionisa it. Dionisa Gonzalez of 244 Web Circle. Um, I was just trying to get to put a pool in. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so it looks like all that area for the ETVs was dug out. So I mean, like deep dug in. So I was trying to, again, get some some yard, you know, so we could play, and uh, a pool, and that's what happened. And I, I spent, I didn't know that, you know, that went 
halfway into where the house is, or even what you yeah, were talking like about right before, about where the house was supposed to be or not supposed to be. Right behind the house, <clears throat> so going when, straight out, this, this conservation easement really comes yeah, to which, a point. Which, I mean, <laughs> that's like, you know, like almost with the deck. Is that where the fill is? Um, yeah, the, the yeah. picture of the fill is this, air, this is area in here, so... Um, I think, it, well, I, I personally think that it was dug out to put the house there and just never put back. Yeah, you know, but again, I, you know, I'm not there for that. I'm just trying to get a pool in there. Yeah. Where did you want to put your pool? Right there, where the yellow inside you the yellow know, lines. You can use you can that move mouse. the mouse, by the way, and show. If you want, it'll you show up point. on. It'll show up on the screen. Yeah, you, you, right here. Yeah. I want yeah. to put it right here. You know? Yeah. So unfortunately, right inside that yellow line, you can't do anything because that's pro there's and we can't change that. That's the yellow line is is uh, the conservation easement. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. lovely. So in this case, you got a rather large yard, um, and you just well, you got a septic area here. So you know, I, I don't, you have to talk with the health department, find out if you can move it this way. If you can't, then your only other option for the pool is back here somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's all rock. Yeah. Well, it's it's. You know, I, I don't Most know. Most of Monroe is all rock, unfortunately. It's either wild rock or wild. I mean, you'd yeah. have to, you, you've got such a large area there, you could, if, what do you want to put a built in? Above. above ground, yeah. So you could put it above ground over a ledge. Well, that's, if. Uh, Steeper the, slope? The, sept, the septic area is right there. So no, your septic area is, um, septic right. area is right, right Yeah. So further back in this area, you've got area back there. And I don't know if you've talked to the health department, but you could maybe do something here. There's probably a pipe somewhere here that, and a septic tank that's probably in the way. But yeah, it's um, unfortunately, it's this really is a prohibited and protected zone. So um, well, I'll let you guys speak to what needs to be done about that. There are certain things that we can approve inside of the regulated area, which is anything inside of that dotted red line. But unfortunately, there's outside. nothing that we can approve inside of that yellow line because it's a conservation easement. Um, what are your plans for that shed? I got a couple things in there now, but that was coming down. <laughs> I mean, it I is coming down, shed. or you're, or now it's coming down because you've. No, it was going to come down either way. It's, okay. It's like... So you want to remove the shed anyway? It's ugly. Okay. I mean, that's cool because it's, it's not supposed to be there. Yeah, it's so, ugly. It's great. Like, that's one, one of our issues solved right there. The, the shed's going to come out. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars in dumpsters cleaning this yard out. I mean, this was... It looks like it was a mess, yeah. More than a mess. It's, I mean, when you start cutting grass, you start seeing things, and you're just like, holy crap, you know? But, again, that's, you know... Right. So, I mean, we need... Has this stuff over here been removed, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. where I, the I, encroachment is. More than busy. I, <laughs> it's... Yeah, they had, they had it was... I mean, it went all the way up the driveway. It was, I mean, I pulled out machines from in that purple area right there. Yes. How long have you owned the house? About a year and a half now. Yeah, no. Was he was he aware of these violations? No. Nope. When they bought the house, no. Mm -hmm. But you knew the stuff was there. No. You didn't know the debris no, was not, there. No, not until no, no, not until you start cutting. When I bought it, the grass was taller than me. It was taller than me. It was it, you can't see anything, and then you, I cut this area. Started cutting over here, you know, little by little. I got it down, got it down, got it down, and I, you know, cutting because it had. This was right here, across here. I know you see it as it looks like on the that I've done something, but across this way, that was all there. The only thing I did was put a little bit right over here, where behind there's like a fire pit there that's coming down too. That's all, you know, it was bricks. You know, I'm just taking that all down too. But that was, you know, right. I just put, you know, it was a couple of trucks just to fill in so I could get closer to the edge where it falls off, so I could have a pool overlooking an edge and woods. You know, how many trucks? Phil, did you that dump there? Six to ten. Well, that's not that bad. It's, I didn't do much. I mean, the only thing I, 
as you can see the track on that thing, you can see that it's, you know. It's close to. They, that's a track. See right there where this is? Keep wanting to go up there. But this right here, yeah. that used to be a track. So it looks like it, it was excavated out. You know, because ATV, everything, well, the ATVs, I think, just. Dug in. I mean, it's, it's down from. I mean, if you can, if you can pull out a, a, get an old aerial photo, I mean, do we have old uh, topo maps? Yeah, I mean, there's. For the town, you can see maybe if it was originally graded differently. Oh, it clearly was graded differently. I mean, there's an extensive amount of fill. No, I know that, but was it, was it, well, that's true. It came up from the woods. It was, was. Uh, yeah, in six feet of fill. But I'm saying, what did it look like before the house was there? Well, typically. You know what I'm saying? So oh, find out. That, right. But remember that they got an approval for the house. Oh, so, I understand. So it's you don't want to reinvent the wheel. No, no, no. I'm just trying to figure out if they have a big gouge in their yard that wasn't natural. Well, see, what when, happened was... When the house was built, then why would we make them cut so, it back out again? Yeah, I think I what happened what was... I see what he's saying. Yeah, too. I see yeah. what you're... The, the, the conservation the easement, easement and the lower elevations jot, jutted into the, the yard here like this. Yeah. And uh, that was the lay of the land. I think the slope came along here, came out. And typically, you guys would get, as part of the submission to you, the formal submission, the applicant or the owner would, would um, provide that information, mm -hmm. would get that. We've got GIS information available. Uh, both online and in the office where they can, their person, whoever does it, can get that information mm -hmm. typically. Did the as-built have uh, contours on it? No, the as-built was uh. this. I don't re remember, I don't believe so. I mean, um, that would be um, one of these, let's see. Okay, so, uh, you know, I stand correct. No, this that's the approved. No, that's, that's not the approved. The, yeah, that's, that's the approved. That's the approval. That's yeah, the, and here's the yeah, house. It oh, does. Okay. It, let's see what it's got here. It's got. Um, the yeah. napkin sketch. <laughs> so it shows that. Oh, it's got the wetlands line on it, and it's got the conservation easement line on but it. But no contours. But no contours. I mean, clearly, you could see, though, that. It's following the same shape as the wetland, which means yeah. that's it's, it's the contour. Which makes sense. Let's see if the contour there on the other map, just to get a sense of that area. That's true. Yeah, see the see the contours. Um, they come in and down. See them. See they jump right in there. They get kind of light, but you can see how they come in here. This this this. This was all a big giant swale that went this way. When was this done? This approval was granted back in 1998. But when was the house built? No, that's when the the house was built in around 98. It was July of 98, so it must have been later that year. Okay. So it, it so, had, you know, came into wetlands and it had the, the right, it had the plan and the, you know, all this stuff, but it, they didn't follow the plan. For some, I'm going to guess that this plan showed the septic system rather close to the wetlands and probably when they went out to test it, after they got their building permit, yeah. the, back in that day, the health <laughs> department would just make some changes on the fly and they would just say, oh, no. septic there, so put your house there? Yeah. Right. Oh, you got to move this. So they just did it, I guess. The sanitarian I, really yeah. did, did quite a lot of that stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. okay, you know what Arbitrar I'm talking about. Yes, yeah. arbitrary yeah. decisions and oh. no approvals and All stuff right. like that. So. so I guess we still have to deal with the... Still got to deal with the conservation easement. The conservation easement, the film, the conservation easement. Is, uh, is the biggest deal here, correct? So, I mean, yeah. the debris is, is gone or going, the shed is going. So it's that fill in the conservation easement that we have to deal with. And what was there, what's underneath the fill? 
I mean, what was it? What was there? That you cut trees down to get to it? There, there was um, probably three trees, three, four trees. Yeah. Can you pull all that material <clears throat> out of where it is now and just move it over towards the right? Because that same slope is all along that edge, isn't it? You, you can't do that because the septic system. I'm thinking well, like in front system. of the shed. Oh, or on top of the shed. The top Move it over right the shed. shed. Yeah. yeah. It's still up in review, but that's the edge of it. Right. At least we get it out of the conservation. Get it out of the conservation easement so we can clear that violation. So what's and closest to the figure out where the, the pool house? can go if he still wants it. Can that stay? What? What's closest to the corner of the house that above the yellow bit. line? Yeah, anything, on, a little the, bit, anything yeah. on the house side of the yellow line is, well, I mean, that's up in review area, but. I mean, it sounds to me like point. you're going to have to hire some hire a professional and. Do and, an application. And do an application to remove remove the fill and, and, and put something back. I think that if you guys just indicate to him that he needs to, uh, what I'm hearing anyway, is that you're you clearly view this as a submission to the commission, correct? Well, yeah, I mean, only because of the conservation easement, right? Okay. Well, you, there's two issues here. There's the remediation for the activity that's happened, and then there may be um, an element of proposed development there in terms of what he would like to keep there and yeah. where he would end up putting his oh, pool. Oh, you mean in the upland review? You're not talking so about So what I was getting at is it, it, I if you guys are saying he has to do that, then All I can meet with him and or your pro professional. We can meet in the office and I can guide you on what you would need to submit to this commission. But it would be a pretty extensive Submission. It's it's a, it's a, you're actually submitting a plan, and uh, a, a, it's not called an application, but application information that would come before the commission. So I I can provide that um, assistance in understanding what needs to be submitted to the commission. I'm hearing from the commission though that you. You want a submission for remediation? I think we have to. We don't have any choice. Yeah. Really. Okay, so it's, it's uh, really only dirt there. I mean, but see, the uh, thing is, it's unfortunately, a legal if you thing. planted a tree there, we'd be in the same situation yeah. because it's a conservation. It's state. a legal thing. And it's and legal. Legally, we cannot uh, we cannot approve or allow any disturbance there. So from behind the pit area. I don't, I'm not sure. Wherever what the, pit the purple area is, is inside the yellow line. So just tell him what your expectations are for how you how one goes about restoring a conservation easement based on what you've asked other people to do. This is I'm I saying in a very this. general way. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is because you're the commission, not me. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and I gotta meet with people and they they you know, they, they have a blank look at me like when I start telling them what they need to do. So <laughs> they need to hear it from the commission, not me. Yeah. What we've had to do in the past, we've had a few of these before. We had to ask them to remove the fill that was there and to replant it with as close vegetation to as close to what's existing around it to make it back into the kind of area that it used to be. And in the interest of consistency, we ask the same of everybody. Um, and um, we hate doing this, we, we, but we have no choice. Our hands are tied. But at the same time, if you're planning on putting a pool in, you should you would show it at the same time and come in. And Just that not way there. You get your permits to put the pool in. Um, and you know you fill potentially right up to and. and who knows into wetlands? So you, you know that's right. got to be that's got to be uh, at least confirmed that you didn't, and then they'd excavate back down to the original grade, which probably would be pretty easy to figure out. I, I, look, my kid and my family has been friends with the Espositos for years, so we kind of know this property. If that whole backyard has been nuked, like. You won't find any native soil. You'll dig and you'll just find subsoil. Because yeah. it's just, it's all been moved Well, that's, around. that's, I mean, your professional might 
look at old contours and say, well, this is a more natural shape of it. Who knows? I mean, it, ultimately, your professional is going to have a submission to us depending on what you and him work out and what you think we might approve. Now, if you go in there and say, well, we're just going to throw grass seed on it and leave it the way it is, probably won't get approved. So but was, we can't tell yeah, you what to, what to submit to us because it's ultimately up to you, and then we'll say yes or no. Um, that is obviously what Lois said was, was what <clears throat> we've asked people to do in the past. Unfortunately, there's clear evidence that there's disturbance inside that conservation easement. Anything outside of conservation easement doesn't look too, like, too much of a concern. Stuff we'll need to address. But the, the, the main issue is the disturbance inside that conservation easement. And we just, unfortunately, cannot turn a blind eye to that. Because, again, that's deeded. So I got to pay for the previous guy that yes, had that. Yes, unfortunately, you bought the problem. And that's, it runs with the land. That's something else we hate. To, well, hate to, you you put fill it though, right? I, not that much. It, that shows that because obviously when they put it there, I pushed it over. You know, but that's it. That's it's really not that much. Like it's it looks to par. Like but if you go back to hard. a picture, you see when you come out. Well, we've it, got... it looks to par. It doesn't look <laughs> like it's. It looks ten times better than what was there. As far know? as the the grades go, we've got an eighty four contour plan. And we've got what's there today, so that's an easy thing to address. Well, the thing is, if it was, if if you can show that it was it was graded at a certain elevation when the house was built, then then you know, then I'd like to see that. I would um, too. If you only yeah. put six loads in, I would too. Easy enough to take out. You know, bring. Do you have yeah. proof of? Do you have proof of that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I would. I again. You know, judging by your previous uh, look, you know the way you address some of the other conservation areas, I think it's probably more important on these conservation easements. If you think about it, once the fill is put there, the damage is done. Um, it's probably most important to to consider how it gets restored to function as a conservation easement as opposed to removing every speck of fill that's on yeah. it. You know, like exactly. How, yeah. Exactly. So you, you probably focus I, I more know. on on you know what to plant back in there. Correct. And and a little bit of grading to establish the fact that there's a slope and a toa slope. Yeah. yeah. Not not a flat yard kind of thing. So, you know, I could help you with that because I, I'm not a voting member of the commission, so I can kind of guide you in what they'll probably look for. But typically that's, you know, there's a planting plan, there's a little bit of removal, um, pushing around of some material. Uh, the conservation line is usually marked with, with markers every 50 feet or angle points. And then their commission typically, and you can weigh in on this, you typically ask for some type of permanent, uh, something more permanent to okay, stop, yeah. uh, to act as a barrier to prevent future encroachment, be it um, a fence or, or boulders or a stone wall. Uh, there's various things that different people like different things, you know, depending upon what you're, what you're uh, desire and, and um, what, what you would rather see out your back window, you know. So um, I can work with them on that. So you, you're saying you want them to make a formal submission to the commission uh, with, uh, you know, a regular plan that, that's developed and... and uh, I think for the record, I'm, no, I'm not sure that we would like that, um, but unfortunately I think that's what we need at this point. <laughs> so like is the wrong word. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we need. Um, good, good way of putting it. You know, it's nobody wants it. This is an unpleasant. It's in, right? yeah, it's not the you know, because someone's got to put that put that conservation easement in the field and right. come up with a planting plan and do some do some. Uh, so I think that your your first step is probably to to schedule a time where Scott can give you a little bit of guidance. I'm not I'm not sure what your background is, or what you do for a living, but maybe I think your next step might probably to hire hire someone to help you. You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you're a land surveyor. I sell cars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I barely got into the town. You know, right. I'm, I'm lucky the other guy did what he did. You know. Right. 
Yeah. So I think your next step probably is to find someone that has some experience, a professional that has some experience with this kind of thing um, and, and can kind of put this we, together We have other you. files in the office that uh, people have been through the same thing, so you might be able to get some information from those files as far as different people that do that kind of stuff. So we can help you in that too. All right, well thanks for coming in. Like I said, maybe be in touch with the with the office. I think Don just gave you the contact information. And then uh, we'll just before he goes, and so we can write up, we're gonna send you a letter as a follow up to this. Um, what What's the timing of, of oh, yeah. this that we should put in this letter? 60 or 90. So in 60 days we go to we go to once a month anyway, right? Well, if we don't get it by 90, there's not enough time for planting. So 60? Um, do you think you could do it in two months? Not do, not, do not do the work. Not do the work. Not do the work, but come, not up, do the work, come in here with plan. the with the plan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I can draw the pictures myself. I don't have to. I mean, no, you're going to have, have to, have to and this is very unfortunate because the conservation easement is, again, it's a very prohibited area, and in order, the plant, like we're looking at it on a drawing, but when it comes time to do the work, you have to know where it is in the, in the yard, and that's going to involve a surveyor. Someone, a surveyor has to come and locate that thing so that you, your contractor knows where the limit of it is going to be, you know, where to put the fence and where to do the grading. So, yes. However, if you already have maps on file. Well, I mean, you got maps. You, you're not saying put a fence on that yellow line like that. Yes. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. That's like halfway into the yard. Well, it's, that's the point. It's not the it's yard. Not the it's yard. a conservation easement. So I can't even... Play on there? No. Well, you can, you can walk in there, but you can't mow it. You can't. You can't. can't play ball on it. You can't. You can't play hide and seek. Yeah. You can't cut down trees there. You that's can't. why you're going to want to think of some plantings that you don't mind looking at. Yeah, you, you want to. You know what I mean? That aren't going to just no, turn into a big jungle. You can use it. Mess. You just can't disturb it. Like, you can't. That can't be grass that you mow your lawn every Sunday on, unfortunately. So, this this plan that was done was done by SPAC, the Oracle, and um, and uh, that, that's the gentleman that was here before you got up. Um, the as built was done, who did this? Let's see. Even if it was, there was grass there before, it's just really tall. I mean, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, in other words, it was a, um, it was a um, violation when you bought it. Well, I mean, yeah, you, go, you could go back, you know, into old aerial photos and see what was there. Who knows? You know? So, I mean, we're very old ones. Like to the, we're not telling you to go to SPAC, but we're telling you that they did the they did the other plans. Now they don't have surveyors anymore. They they I'm assuming they work with a company that does survey. But um, you don't have to go with them. But though they already did a previous survey, so so they may still have. It's likely. Do you have them that have to buy them from you or pay them here, right? the old survey? No, file, you have to get a current survey. That's the whole point of a survey, to get new information that will reflect what's actually there today and what you're going to do and all that. So that person can explain the rest of that to you. But, and I can explain more in the office when you come in. But um, uh, yeah, that will be the next step for you to come in and I can explain more of this. How much is something like that to yeah, I, I don't, we really shouldn't get into it here. Okay. No, I, I, but I, I, I could definitely, you know, I can, I can help you with that a little bit. I don't have a lot, you know. Yeah, I, I um, we can talk a little bit about what the ultimate cost is going to be. Um, but there there definitely is a good, a good cost that goes with this. Um, and I can, I can go over so that. So if you find an old photo or something and it shows that that whole area before you bought the house was all excavated out. Again, it's the, the conservation easement, it's not from happen. before he bought the house, it's, it's from what it is. A conservation easement is a conservation easement. It goes with when it was established. 
So yeah. Any time after the conservation easement is established, if it's disturbed, that's a violation. All right. So, but what I'm saying is, is if by chance he finds that the whole area was dug out and he simply just put the material back, it would have, have to have been dug the out before the, the conservation easement was created. So yeah, and they could find that out by looking at the, the uh, aerials and the topography. So we, we have, enough, I think we have enough information to answer that question. It'd be good to find out. Yeah. Like I can see like on the edge of the house, you can see under the house, like it needs dirt. I mean, the house yeah. is gonna, it's already leaning that way. Right. <laughs> well, whoever you get going on this can definitely help you um, sure. with that, answering those kinds of questions. I know the information is available. All right, so um, come on in to the office and we'll, we'll at least start the conversation. And the sooner the better. Tuesdays. Huh? Tuesdays is my way to the office. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give the office a call and set a specific time. But yeah, sooner than later because you only got 60 days to get it done. So I can start taking out. So I have a machine there. Yeah, my suggestion, you guys can chime in if you want, but typically we tell people not to yeah. do anything. Probably shouldn't do anything, anything until you have the plan, until I have the plan squared away. So don't take anything out? No. Yeah, because you can make it worse. You, know, you, you don't want to do that. Can, Except for the shed, to... if you want to get rid of the shed now, you can do that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's outside the conservation easement. So and the rest of that debris that's there. So the debris in the front of the house, I can't pull that out and put it over there? In the inside of the, next to the shed? Is that what you're saying? Remember, too, you know, we really didn't talk about this, but the um, there's a disturbance out. I guess the pool was uh, was taken out, right? That's gone. I don't know how you could have a pool there, but yeah. Yeah. So um, there's also this disturbance here. Luckily, most of that is not in the conservation. So I could take that out and put it next to the shed because it'll look Take what out? I think that was a trampoline. I don't think that was a pool. No. I have no idea. There was nothing there when I got there except what, like what? What so what do you like take out? What's this debris that you want to pull out? Oh, it's dirt and all that stuff. I was trying to come around the house that way. Yeah, again, I, I think you should get someone to get the plan going because we remember that everything within this dotted line, this red line here, that's regulated and you need a permit to do it. It's not to say you can't do it, but the, this commission wants to review what you're doing so that they can understand and know and determine that it's acceptable, uh, that it it's the lead. So that's why I'm saying that you, all of this whole area here, your most of your house and the rest of this area is all regulated area that you need permits. So the suggestion is don't do anything, take a time out get a plan going, and then bring the plan to the commission, and then you're gonna know in the, in the fall, you'll know what, what you can do and what you can't do, and then in the fall, you clean this whole thing up and, and get going with it. I think that should really be the goal. Um, otherwise, if you do something now, and then you find out that that's not what they want, or it's a vi another violation, now you might have an additional cost, you know? I don't, I don't think that would be worth the risk. So the pool, nowhere there? Not there. No, the pool Yeah, not in the yellow. Nope. When you come into the office, we'll get the health department to help out too, because between them and, and, and us, we can figure out where your options for a pool would be. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next uh, thing on our agenda is agent. Well. Agent activities report. Okay, so um, under agent 
activity reports, we've got, um, well, I think you should go through and, and indicate that there are no bond releases or reductions. Okay, sorry. There is a, we didn't finish any, there's no application hearing determinations, there's no deliberations tonight, we didn't finish anything. Uh, there's no bond release or reduction reports, there's no time extensions, uh, and now we're at uh, item okay, number 10. So agent approvals, uh, we uh, issued one for IAA 2019-12 for 433 Moose Hill, which was a uh, propane tank. Uh, permitted uses as of right. There was one issued. It was a uh, emergency septic repair like last meeting. So it was for 18 William Henry Drive. Um, you <coughs> need to indicate if uh, that is acceptable for a, um, I always forget the term, a um, permitted use. A what? Permitted use. No, the Jurisdic uh, jurisdictional rule. Jurisdic so, uh, and yes, I need a motion. I talked to the attorney about it. <laughs> yes, so 18 William Henry Drive. Wait, you need a motion for what? Jurisdiction rule? That you, that you agree that it was... All the way at the bottom, last one. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's all right. So here's the permitted <laughs> use as of right, and here is the sketch showing the yard comes way back into here, and this is where they're um, repairing the, the <laughs> septic system. Hundred, so it's Thank within you know. your 100-foot upland review area, but it's within the yard area. Uh, and we've been allowing emergency septic repairs under permitted uses as of right, it's assuming you guys uh, issue a jurisdictional ruling that agrees with that. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to issue that jurisdictional ruling. Move to approve that is a permitted what I uses said. as of right. Okay, so Second. I have, I have a motion by Commissioner Spence. Okay. Second by Commissioner Stewart. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, abstention, motion passing. Okay. okay, next item is. Uh, did, I, did, did I miss 433 Moose Hill? Yes. Yes, you did. did. No, we, we, we went over it. it. He said it. Okay, we missed it. I'm yeah. sorry. That's what I meant. That I missed it. You missed it. That's yes. what I mean. <laughs> but we did go over we it. Did. Okay. All right, next item did a great job. is administrative reviews. We've got. A uh, new one, and I'm sure you'll be. Uh, yeah, That's a good you know one. that this is another conservation. Uh, uh, of course. Right. So this one here is an area that um, we received a call from a concerned resident that there was something going on there, a lot of activity, trees down, some filling, equipment, etc. Uh, went out and confirmed that there was unapproved clearing within the upland review area, clearing within the wetlands, filling within the upland review area, filling within the wetlands, filling within the conservation area, and uh, unapproved filling consisting of metal and brick materials as well as stumps. Um, the sketch here shows the house. <coughs> on the property, has a big finger of wetlands that comes in here. Uh, apparently they had approval to cross that wetlands with the driveway, uh, but now have filled this large pink area, which is partly in the wetlands. The crosshatched area here is conservation easement, so it's within the conservation easement, and it's within the upland review area. Is Pictures of it. Oh. That's the film. Oh, man. What? That's oh, what are we doing? Why would Notice the violation. This is the fill. This and what they're doing is they're they're dumping in this large depressed area, which is partly <gasps> wetlands and, con and conservation easement, and they're covering it over with all the trees that they're cutting. So they're just placing the trees oh, on top in the hopes that you won't we won't see the fill that's underneath it. Oh, oh my god. So. Anyway, I don't. I don't know that there's a question. There, you can see the, the, the swale yeah. and how it's being filled in. Yeah, notice of violation. Okay. Please. Oh goody goody. Oh boy. You guys can see that. It's clean fill anyway. This isn't something that we're going out and looking no. for. This stuff's coming they to, come us. to us. And it's when it, it's these things are they're not even subjective ones. These are pretty egregious. 
Okay. All right. So we're on to general discussion. The minutes of April twenty fourth, twenty fourth, two thousand eighteen. Um, we don't have enough. Oh no. I wasn't here, so I have to abstain. We don't have enough for either of the minutes. <laughs> okay. Let's put it off. Tabled again. Table both minutes until our next meeting. Um, anything from the regulation amendment committee? No. Public outreach committee? Nope. <clears throat> no correspondence? Um, yes, there was correspondence that they used herbicides in one of the columns yeah, yeah. on May 14th, so the whole thing is. <laughs> Excellent. Past history. All right. You know move to adjourn. I have a mo uh, motion to adjourn by Commissioner Spence. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Mastrocco. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, opposed. Abstention. Means adjourn.